How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews, back with another end of year breakdown. Gonna try to speed through this one because there's a lot of beers to cover, so buckle up, Buttercup. We're gonna dive into my top barrel aged beers I reviewed. Keep that in mind, not the best ones I've had, but the ones I've actually posted to my channel. Top 20. We're gonna go over 20 because there's so many I had to do a 20 list. No honorable mentions. I'm going to rip through these as fast as I can. So, top 20 barrel aged beers I reviewed in 2015. Hopefully, I have some graphics here. Hopefully, I get everything done. Yada, yada, yada. Try to keep this video relatively short. So, let's dive right in. Number 20 Endless Brewings, Burning Common. Local guys. I put these guys on the list. I had a lot of beers fighting to get in 20, but I had to put these guys on here because I enjoyed that beer that much. And who just doesn't want to? Pump up a couple local guys too while uh, while we're at it. Um, small brewery out of Montrose, Pennsylvania. They made this. It was a uh, English style barley wine that they aged in Jack Daniels barrels on grape must with a bunch of whole awesomeness going on. Really rich, decadent, delicious beer. Um, absolutely fucking love it. Hopefully, I can pick a couple more bottles up of it and send it to people. But yeah, if you're in the area of Montrose, Pennsylvania, Endless Brewing, check them out. Doing really cool stuff. On, between Scranton and Binghamton, Scranton, PA, and Binghamton, New York, and that stretch of 81. So check them out. Uh, number 12, St. Bernardus App 12 Apple Brandy Barrel. Listen, it's St. Bernardus, it's App 12, it's Apple Brandy Barrels. What the fuck more do you want? It's Apple Brandy Barrels and a great fucking beer. Probably the closest, if not, I actually like St. Bernardus 12 more than I like fucking West Vito than 12. So put that in Apple Brandy Barrel, we're all fucking winning. Um, Number 18, North Coast Cell Reserve 2013. Their 2011 Brandy Barrel Age version was like, I think, like one or two or three in my last year's best beers review. So this shows you how many good beers they have this year. At this year's version, which is a Bourbon Barrel Age, just made it to fucking 18. Just classic old ale, Asian Bourbon Barrels, done infinitely well. It's fucking delicious. 17, Omnipolo's Agamemnon. Kind of hesitated putting this on this list because it was one of those weird price point beers that are like, it was like $20 for 12 ounces. But it was super rich, decadent, super deep, super rich, not thin in any way whatsoever, Paul from Pay Brunos. So I had to put it on the list. Really awesome beer. There you go. Um, number 16, Humble Brewings Black Xanthus. I want to say a 2012 year bottle. It was definitely older than 2013, could be old as 2009. I ripped a bunch of these off the shelf of local bottle shop, paying a grand total of $15 a bottle. It was basically what you got when they were owned in that period of time. Um, it was a Firestone Walker owned company. So you're basically getting the Firestone Walker Imperial Stout, aged, barrel aged by Firestone Walker for 15 bucks a bottle. No one knew about it. It was absolutely delicious. Huge, rich, deep. Again, it's going to be a theme because it's barrel aged. So here we go. Um, that was my number 16. Number 15, Lost, Trabby, Lost Abbey's Track 8. Um, you know, it's there, it's that cinnamon beer. It's a cinnamon chili beer. It's that kind of like your, your, um, uh, Oro Negros of the world, your Braxes of the world, your Hunapus of the world, your Mexican cakes of the world. But, uh, this was the one that really did it for me from Lost Abbey. Really rich, deep, dark, um, nice, uh, they classified it as a, I believe, a Belgian quad, but it was like somewhere between quad and Belgian stout. Nice cinnamon. Spiciness, absolutely delicious. So that's my number 15. Number 14. It's really weird putting, it was so hard to make this list. And when I read these beers off, I laugh at myself. Because that's how, I was like, how is this beer at number uh, 14? But it is. Weyerbacher Sunday Morning Stout. Great fucking beer. Uh, kind of the beer that kind of, Came out of nowhere for a lot of people. Not for us in PA. We get a lot of Weyerbacher stuff, so we know how good they are. It was basically a, a lot of people call it the their answer to KBS. Totally different beer than KBS. Way more stout-like um, than KBS is. KBS is more breakfast stouty, and then it's kind of a bit more English stouty-wise, where this is more of uh, a... Um, Traditional stout, tons of coffee, nice bourbon to it, absolutely beautiful beer. Um, flew under the radar until people figured it out, and now it's kind of coveted, so we're going to see what happens with this year's release. But huge beer from Weyerbacher, absolutely delicious, and it could easily be way up in the list, but there's so many good beers, I had to put it somewhere, so I put it at 14. Um, number 13 was Heavy Seas Below Decks 
Barley Wine Cabernet Barreled 2011. I got a um, I got a beer mail that I paid for. It wasn't actually something that somebody sent me. Have a bunch of aged beers, and um, this was um, I got a couple of heavy seas below decks, and I got some uh, bourbon barrel aged one and a, a Cabernet barrel aged one, and this one just blew my fucking blew everything off. Titties, ass, face, everything. Absolutely fantastic. Love this beer to no end. So I had to go on this list because just that marriage of that Cabernet barrel with those rich Venice notes with the nice barley wine, English style. I think it was American barley wine, but at that time it's English because all the hot presence is gone. Beautiful beer. Um, number 12, Jackio's Brick Kiln. Uh, bourbon barrel aged stout. Bourbon barrel aged stout from Jackio's. They know what the fuck they're doing with barrel aged stuff and non barrel aged stuff, but this one just did it for me. You can go watch the review. The review is probably one of the more drunker reviews I've ever done. Um, but just because I was drunk doesn't mean it's not correct. That is even, and that shows you how good this beer was. I was kind of tipsy when I did the review, and I still think it's one of the better beers I've had. So there you go. Um, number 11. I can't believe this beer's at number 11. Uh, it's La Trap Brewery Koningshoven. La Trap. Quad Barrel Age Batch Number Sixteen. I love this beer so much. It basically tastes to me. It's not even a quad at this point. The way they barrel age it. And if you go actually on a Koningshoven's or La Trap's site, they'll break down. If you look up the batch number, they'll tell you. Okay, this is how we barrel age this particular beer from barrel to barrel because they use multiple barrels. This ended up coming at very old ale for me. Very like rich old kind of Thomas Hardy. Old J.W. Lee's like for me, so it's absolutely fantastic. One of the best beers I've had this year. It goes to show you how many great beers I've had. This is like number fucking 11. Um, number 10, Hardywood Parks. Uh, Burn Barrel H English Barley Wine. This one, I, I love Hardywood. Um, their beers are absolutely fucking fantastic. And um, I bought this one. Just be, I've had a couple of other beers that were, oh, this is great, this is great. And I grabbed it. I was like, yeah, it's probably on Burn Barrel Age. Fuck yeah. And I took it home and we cracked it. I believe it was um, a joint review between me, Joe from NEPA Beer Reviews, Amanda from NEPA Beer Reviews, and my buddy Brad. And we cracked it and we were like, holy fuck, what the fuck's going on right now? This beer's amazing. So it's I, it might be the best Hardywood beer I've had. It's the same a lot because they make a lot of good, really fucking beers. Um, number nine, the shoots, not the stellic. Barrel Age Quad, Barrel Age Belgian, I believe. I don't know if it's quad or not. Regardless, absolutely fantastic. There's been so many good um, the shoots beers, Barrel Age beers I've had this year. I reviewed everything from um, their Abyss to uh, oh god, what else did I review? Their um, Jubel, which is fucking amazing, to a bunch of them, but not stoics. That's the one that stuck out to me. So. Put that one up here because it fucking deserves it. Excuse me. This is that fucking good. Um, eat. Firestone Walker's 19th anniversary. It's Firestone Walker. It's 19th anniversary. Multi-beer blended. They take all their bigger beers, their reserve series, their barrel-aged beers, and kind of blend them into an anniversary beer. It's fucking bonkers. So I'm not going to say anything more than... It's fucking delicious. Next up. Um... The Brewery, Black Tuesday. Um, this year's version, uh, 2015, absolutely fantastic. Reviewed it, thought it was awesome. Actually cracked the bottle a couple days ago for Christmas for my family. And said, yeah, this is fucking absolutely fantastic. Just huge. Um, they call it Imperial, I believe they call it Imperial Stout. I view it as just Imperial Old Ale. That's kind of what I view it as. Just all kinds of literally shaved chocolate on top of cherries on top of awesomeness. Great beer. Price point kind of sucks at 30 bucks, but it's worth the money because it's awesome, huge, and delicious. Um, let's see. Number six. Cane, Cane Brewings at uh, Ocean, New Jersey, their fourth anniversary, um, which is their, I believe, I forget the number. I should have wrote it down because I'm an asshole. It's their fourth anniversary beer. It's like um, 1095 plus whatever. Anyway, I'm going to skip over the numbering portion of the show and just say it's a Solera Method Belgian Dark. Basically, they took, like the brewery does with their actual, um, their anniversary beers, they take their beers and they add a bit of the previous year's version to every New Year's version, Solera Method, and um, this year they did that addition with the added addition of Run Bell Aging, and it was um, straight tits. It was absolutely fantastic. It was up there in the top three, I believe, for me last year, their last year's anniversary, so... Again, it goes to show you 
how many awesome beers I've had this year. Number five, a beer that was shared to me by my buddy Ryan from Lou Brew. Uh, I mentioned him already. Check his uh, thing out on YouTube for a ton of homebrew stuff. He uh, shared with me Hickory Brewing's um, Old Hickory. Um, it was, I believe it was a 2012 version. Uh, I could be totally wrong on that, but um, it was an aged version, and it's just straight up fucking soft barrel, ton of coconut, nice char, beautiful stout. Um, I've never had it before. I haven't had it since, so I'm really lusting over it. So please, please send me some, people. Do me a favor. Do me a solid. Give me some of that old liquor, baby. Mmm. Number four. Surprise beer of the year for me. Um, Lurvig Brewing out of Norway, I believe. Um, they, uh, it's their Brewers Jure Barley Wine 2012. Love this beer. Love this beer. It's a, a English style bourbon barrel aged barley wine. I went to a label bottle shop of mine. I was back in the back um, loading dock area with the owner, and he was kind of just ripping through cases and showing me all the new stuff he got in. And he got a huge order in and pulled out this bottle. And something about it just stuck in my head because it's a purple label with just a big white star in it. And I said, Can I get one of those right now? And he's like, Yeah, and fucking, here, go up front and buy it, blah, blah, blah. And uh, I was like, Yeah, something about it. And I immediately went home and I was like, Something about this fucking beer. And I reviewed it immediately that night. And I fucking blew me away and to the point where I typically review beers and it takes like a month or two or nine to get shit posted. I bought it, reviewed it within an hour, posted it within like a couple hours. So it was that fucking good of a beer. Blew me away. Rich, de dark, decadent, again with that shit, with the bourbon barrel aid stuff. Um, barley wine, just married balance wise with the, uh, with the uh, barley wine, with the barrel, the whole nine. Absolutely fantastic. Number four. Um, and number three, Founder Sweet Repute. Review this up in Canada with the boys. Ended up coming back and reviewing it by myself. Reviewed it twice in the same year because I forgot that we reviewed it up there and I lost it in the whole nine. Anyway, um, yeah, wheat wine, aged in bourbon, bourbon barrel and maple barrel. I can't even speak. <laughs> bourbon barrels and maple syrup barrels. Um, it is the light and I use that word lightly because it's lighter in color. Version of CBS, it's the same process they do with a Canadian breakfast out. They do with this wheat wine. So good. It sat on this, um, the same bottle shop that I bought the Lurvig at. It sat on the shelf there. I knew what it was. It sat on the shelf there for a couple months. No one bought it. And I knew what it was. And I was just like, I don't want to buy it. I don't want to buy it. I don't want to buy it because I know I'm going to want to buy them all. And then one day I was at a, like we were at the bar and I, I grabbed one off the shelf and shared with everybody. Within a week they're all fucking gone. That's how good it fucking is. Anyway, number two, Trogues Bourbon Barrel Age Flying Mouflin. Um, yeah, uh, this beer is fucking fantastic. It's coconut in a fucking beer, baby. It's coconut fucking heaven. Average Joe, average troll fucking heaven. He loved it. I brought it up to Canada and shared with those guys. They fucking dug it. His beer... <sighs> It was, it was made to be. It was fate. Uh, I was getting in my car. I was going to drive to actually a distributor about an hour away from me, about an hour and a half away from me to pick up beer. And the second I walked out, out the door, my buddy was like, hey, they released Burn Brilli, uh, Mufflin. Uh, do you know anybody who can pick it up? And I said, fuck it. I'll go. Because it was like an hour and a half to that to the brewery, then an hour and a half to the place that had the beer I wanted to get an hour and a half home. So it's really only had an hour and a half. Makes sense in my brain. Went down, picked it up. Got a bunch of people some, came back, I actually drank one when we got the brewery. I was like, holy fucking shit. Flying Mouflin's a great beer in itself. It's American barley wine. But they aged this beer in the barrels for three, three, not three, three, three years, and it was absolutely fantastic. Like I said, all your capable barrel characteristics, your barrel, your chard, you know, your cherries and bourbons and malts, but it's that coconut, the level of coconut they had in there off the barrel itself was off the hook. Absolutely fantastic beer. And number one, Founder CBS. Um, I reviewed this uh, just on the spot at a bar. I went to a local um, bar to me. They had it on draft. And I got it on draft. And I said, I'm never going to be able to review this beer. I said, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to fucking review it. So I walked around and walked around and ended up meandering to a portion of the bar that was closed. And I was like looking around. And the owner was there. I was like, hey, man. 
it's okay if I go into the, in here and just review this beer or do beer reviews? He's like, sure. So I sat in the bar <laughs> in a quiet area and reviewed it. And it was worth the review and it was worth the beer. It was just one of the better beers I've ever had. Uh, just, I'm a maple syrup junkie. It had a uh, beautiful beer to it. Um, beautiful, nice stout to it. Um, but you got a decent, hell heaping portion of bourbon and a really big helping of maple syrup. And it just kind of bounced off each other beautifully to the point where while it was a big, huge, decadent beer, it wasn't over the top for what it was. And it was just absolutely fantastic. So, so yeah, I tried to go through that as fast as I could. So hopefully I did. Didn't make the video too long. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed that breakdown. Top 20 barrel aged beers of 2015 that I've reviewed. If you agree with this or you don't agree, whatever, comment down below and tell me how much I am awesome or suck or somewhere in between. Um, and uh, yeah, there you go. So hopefully you guys enjoyed me going over all this shit. Hopefully you enjoyed watching my reviews because I have a good time doing this because it's pretty fucking badass that I get to do it and people fucking watch and it's pretty awesome. Um, hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys continue watching. Hopefully you're drinking some of these fucking beers right now and uh, hopefully see you next time. Cheers.